Welcome back to another episode of Kyle's Garage, where today we find out if I can assemble this 1930 Ford Model A front end correctly the first time. I'm going to need a manual. Yes, I am. And just to catch up anyone that hasn't been following along at home, I've got this 1930 Ford Model A. The kingpin bushings in the front spindles were pretty thrashed, so I'm going ahead and replacing those. And I got lucky because I went home for the holidays back to Kansas from Michigan, and my father actually had a brand new set of spindles with bushings already in place. So I'm really just replacing these. I went ahead and I drilled out the uh, spindles and put in new Zerk fittings so I can grease everything in the last episode. And I've got a bunch of parts cleaned up and I actually just have to get it all back on the car. So we're gonna kinda see how it goes. And before I go too crazy on reassembling everything, I am just gonna go ahead Finish cleaning a few things up, get rid of some old grease from around some parts. I'm not going crazy on cleaning everything absolutely perfectly because this car is kind of dirty and used and I really kind of like it that way. It looks best in that condition. It's a pretty easy process to reassemble this stuff. I'm actually going to go ahead and grab the, the uh, kingpin and the spindle. And that's actually where we start. So I've got everything pretty clean here up top. And we'll do a little bit of a test fit. All right, so I've got our new spindle with the bushings already pressed in, grease fittings ready. And then we're going to our kingpin kit. So we we'll wanna get one of the kingpins, one of the thrust, bearings as well. I want that guy. And looks like that's going to be our first snag of the day. All the grease in this has just gone to crap because it's really old. So I'm going to need to clean these out and get some fresh lubrication in there because these are actually gonna sit on top of here and the weight of the car rides on there to make sure that it's able to turn. So these are the thrust bearings for the kingpins. You can see these previous ones, a little bit different style. What I need to do is get these to where they will actually rotate freely and turn like they should, so. This is something that once it's assembled, I can't really get to. So I want to make sure that it's got plenty of grease and is in good shape right from the start. Rather than having to worry about these failing, going down the road. So, And similar to the wheel bearings, I'm just kind of taking my finger and I'm trying to pack it down and get grease in the bearing rather than just near the bearing. That's a lot better. What are thrust bushing there? Kingpin goes on the top. Our new kingpin is not happy going through the axle right now. Put a light layer of grease on the kingpin. Let's see if it'll fit in there now. After cleaning everything out a little bit. All right, well, we're 
we're just gonna do it that way then. Put a little bit of grease on our kingpin. Because when we tapped it through, everything was nice and tight. Looks like I just can't quite do it by hand. So it's a nice precision fit, just like it should be. Got that there. We're gonna put our thrust washer on top. Get our kingpin. Everything goes through. Make sure everything's. Ooh, that's gonna be nice. All right. But we got a little carried away. We have to knock it back up. So there we go. I failed because I forgot the felt washer and uh, grease cup. So failed on getting it right the first time. So we're gonna knock this kingpin up a little bit. That's it. So there we got everything tightened up. We still have free play. So the car is going to turn. But we don't have any vertical movement. All right. Forward with the reassembly. So next is our brake arm. There we go. We'll slide that in. And that gets its bolt. Just kind of loosely threading everything together. So that's our brake arm. So that transmits from the brake rod here that to a vertical motion that actually pushes out on the shoes. And we'll reinstall our steering spindle here. keyed bolt so I want to make sure I line up so I can get a cotter key through I think I've almost got a passage right there we go so you shoot a new cotter key through there let's get the next piece in so the next piece is going to be our brake actuation rod, which actually goes up through the kingpin and works there. So I'm going to put a dollop of grease on the end like that. Get our full brakes on there. One of my favorite parts because this goes together so quickly. So my brake arm, my pivot arm, is just down there. You can see it actuating the shoes. Next up is our grease baffle. Through there. And these nuts. Uh, 
And I need to check the diagram because I think these came through and figure out which side the cast nut was on, if it was this side, if the nut was on the other side. So let me go check on that. So I did have that correct on the grease baffle. I just went and checked. The bolts go through the baffle, through the backing plate, and then through our new spindle. So I just have to get everything aligned. And I can thread those on the back. And I'll get all of them threaded before I go too crazy on tightening them. There we go. And you'll notice I'm not tightening everything down and I'm not installing cotter keys as I go. I want to get everything assembled as a unit, know I have it correct before I go through, tighten everything to spec and get cotter keys on. And something to keep in mind, especially on bolts like these inside the grease baffle, it's really tempting because it's so easy to access the head of the bolt rather than the nut on the backside. But something to keep in mind is that you want to tighten the nut, not the bolt. So when I'm actually going through and torquing these down and making sure that I've got the cotter pins aligned and whatnot, I'm going to be tightening the actual nut rather than the head of the bolt uh, because the friction of this bolt head against that sealing surface is going to change compared to just tightening the nut on the backside. Uh, so you can end up over tightening things and putting things in a bind and being kind of goofy if you tighten the bolt, not the nut. It's just a quick little thing. It's kind of a pain sometimes, but it's worth it to know that you're assembling things correctly. So you can see, I've got no play in that spindle. It's very nice, nice and tight. You can steering's not connected on the other side, but still got steering movement, but I have no vertical play in that. So that's going to be nice and tight. It's going to eliminate that uh, steering wobble and shake that I was pro having problems with. So I've just got to tighten everything down and run the cotter keys through, and then we should be ready to move over to the other sides. So I've moved on to tightening things down a bit. And uh, one of the things that I really like to have around the garage, and I made it for years without having this by doing things the wrong way, but it's cheap enough to buy an, asset, an assortment of cotter pins. And it comes with various shapes and sizes for just about everything that you need. And I find myself using this a lot more often now that I have it. And they're cheap. It's under 10 bucks. Go out. Buy yourself a set, you'll find yourself using them more and enjoying your car a little bit more because you're not scared that it's going to fall apart. So I happen to have all the cotter pins that I'm gonna need. So I'll go through and pin all these bolts, tighten up everything else, get everything reconnected on this side, bump over to the other side. Cotter pins on castle nuts are super easy. So I'll bend one up over the top. Flex down, one around the side. Right, steering's tight. Brakes on now. Fresh cotter key there too. Does not need a long one, but it does need a strong one. All right, that is that side pretty much reassembled. So I've got to go through, grease everything one time, and uh, this side's good to go. All right, to the other side.
So now we're to the final step. We're gonna slip on those freshly packed wheel bearings, our hub, the other wheel bearing, and give it a quick adjustment. So I'm gonna grab those off the bench. So here are our freshly packed wheel bearings. So I'll go ahead and slide the larger one on to our spindle here. Make sure it gets fully seated. All the way into place. And what I will do is just paint a little extra grease on there so that never hurt any wheel bearings. Then our hub, our outer wheel bearing. Slides into place. Clean off this outside washer. That's it for this episode, but I've got it down on the ground, and I will see you next time. And of course, if you like this video and you want to see more content like it every week, there's new stuff. So uh, be sure to subscribe down below. And for now, I've got to go wash up a little bit and uh, get ready for the next project on this car. I'll see you later.